Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how to turn your GoPro or other waterproof camera into an underwater viewfinder. You might want to do this if you're fishing from a boat or a dock or ice fishing where you can position the camera next to the hook or your lure that you're using and kind of move it away from smaller fish, put it towards the bigger fish, maybe jig it around, make it more enticing. <clears throat> uh, you could also use it for magnet fishing, looking for places where your magnet might get snagged up so you can avoid them. Or if you're just interested in underwater landscaping, uh, photography of that, or if you're looking for cryptids like Nessie or Champ. In my case, I found that there was a number of snakes in my well, in my dug well, and while the live ones were easy enough to capture and pull out, the dead pieces proved much more difficult. So I was using my GoPro, uh, I'd dump it down the well, I'd swing it around while recording, I'd bring it back into the house, dry it off, take the chip out, put it in the computer, view the video to locate where the pieces were, and then I'd use a wet vac to suck them up. But I had to keep doing that time and time again because more pieces got uncovered as I stirred up the muck at the bottom. <clears throat> so that was not a very efficient process. So I discovered that there was a app from GoPro uh, and you can see it on the camera right here. It's GoPro Quick and it allows you to uh, view uh, while the, seeing what the camera is seeing. Uh, I currently have the GoPro strapped to my chest and so what's showing up here you should be able to see that that it's reflecting what's coming on the GoPro. Uh, it is currently recording and there are some settings in my particular uh, camera which is the Hero 3 Plus Black that is required to be able to record and preview at the same time. Um, the GoPro documentation website indicates that there are only certain resolutions and frames per second rate that will work. And I found on mine the highest is, is 1400, uh, 1440 resolution and 30 frames per second. That's the highest <coughs> level I can go up to be able to preview while I'm recording. Uh, but there's another setting which they don't mention called ProTune, and when I had ProTune on, it gives you a couple other settings that does things that sound like they'd be good, but it does prevent you from recording or previewing while you're recording. So, <clears throat> I currently have that set up, and you can see it there. Um, now, the thing with the going underwater is that Wi-Fi is being used to connect your GoPro to your mobile device. And Wi-Fi does not travel through water, you know, more than an inch or two, which is not very uh, practical. So um, it turns out, though, that you can create an ex a tenant extension that will transfer the signal out of the water uh, up into the air where you can um, attach it to where it can connect to your, your mobile device. So when I first tried it, I started using, tried using just regular speaker wire and that did not work. Um, so then I <coughs> tried using some coax networking cable that I had and this did work. So this is what I had used at the time. There's a little coax connection that uh, used to be used for networking before the ethernet RJ45 cables became uh, prevalent. And so I don't suspect that most people have a lot of coax cable lurking in their basement or attic the way that I do. So <clears throat> I'm going to try to replicate the experience with some television coax cable. Uh, in this case I bought this pack of RG59U. Oop, can't see that, my hand is in the way. Uh, RG59U cable that I brought uh, <coughs> Radio Shack I imagine many many years ago and I have a part of that right here it's about 20 feet in length 
And so what you have to do is strip off the insulation for two and a half inches or 6.3 centimeters. And that's apparently one half the uh, size of the wavelength of the Wi-Fi signal. And so you, you do it half on each end. <clears throat> so I have a, a wire stripper that I'm going to use, but uh, it makes it a little more easier. But you can uh, use an X-Acto knife if that's all you have. You just have to be a little more careful. So let's measure this to two and a half. I've got a little bit of a thing already shown out, sticking out of the insulation, so I'll strip the rest of it off. And you just cut the outer plastic layer first. stuck at this end. Then there is a kind of a tin foil layer, which is pretty well it's actually is a couple layers. There's a layer of braided wire that you have to cut off. It's pretty thin, each strand, but it is woven together to make it stronger. And you don't necessarily have to take that off, but uh, you can just push it back so it's off, out of the way of the, the regular coil. Let's just check that again. Yeah, two and a half. So underneath that, there was a tinfoil layer that came off, and then there's one more layer of plastic that you need to uncover to expose the copper inner core. So I don't know if it needs to be precisely, or how important it is to get precisely two and a half. That's a little less, the plastic part stretched. But uh, as long as you have the ability to do it, you might as well comply. There we go. So then I'm going to use the uh, non-waterproof cover because I have the waterproof cover on the GoPro strapped to my chest. So I use this as a stand-in. When you do this for real, you want to use your waterproof cover. And then you just tape it to the back. So in this case, I'm using some black electrician's tape. Sticks pretty well, you know, as long as it stays dry. And it should stay dry at the edges. But you could use duct tape, I'm sure, if you that's all you had. And there you go. So when the signal comes out of the GoPro, the, the Wi-Fi signal comes out of the GoPro, it travels up the cord, goes all around, and then comes out at the end. Um, it doesn't seem like you need to have the other end attached to your camera. It just has to be, you know, within the distance, which, you know, is going to be um, very close in order to be able to, to see what you're looking at. Um, some people have actually taped it to the back, but I didn't want to get adhesive on my case. And it didn't seem to be necessary when I was doing it before. So now we'll take this outside uh, down to a local river nearby and test it out. Make sure that it is working. 
Um, as, as to depth, you know, I've got 20 feet of cable here, uh, which is, you know, the, the stream is only going to, the river is only going to be three or four feet deep at most, uh, where I'm going to test it. Hopefully I'll be able to get out pretty soon to some lakes, go out in my kayak and drop it down and see what's underneath the water. Um, and it's probably almost warm enough to do that today, but, uh, I don't have the rack on my car set up for the kayak yet, so I'll have to do that later. All right, well, see you near the water. I had planned a cinematic experience to demonstrate that my coax extender actually worked. Unfortunately, I ran into a number of problems. First, the phone becomes a black mirror when used in the bright sunlight. And that's what I ended up doing first. I went out to a bridge over the rail trail, or on the rail trail, over a river but that I was intending to use. But the walls of the bridge were six feet or more higher. And while I could have climbed up on it, probably it would have been precarious. And so I didn't want to risk knocking my phone over. So I went to a road bridge that was nearby, which turned out to be have a lot more traffic than I thought. And I couldn't see what was going on. You know, I was using, trying to use the, see the viewfinder and I couldn't see it. And I probably should have taped the coax to the rope that I was using, this uh, paracord. But I didn't, so it was a little hard to deal with. And I basically couldn't see what was going on. So, um, another day I went to a different bridge that I thought would be have less traffic and it turned out, again, not to. And I brought along a box and a towel and I set it up to keep the sun off the lens and the view screen and it did. Um, I still couldn't really see all that well because I had it set up like this and the towel was draped over the top of it and uh, so I couldn't really see what was going on but the camera on my drone was able to pick up uh, the viewfinder and but what I found is that when I dropped the GoPro down past the steel guardrail the signal cut out. And so that was pretty weird because I, I, I had used it before I knew that it was working um, and it wasn't even in the water. I mean, the, the steel guardrail probably absorbed some of the Wi-Fi signal or blocked it, but it shouldn't really have been enough to affect it, but, it, but it, for whatever reason it was. So I started experimenting in my backyard with a bucket of water and, you know, it still wasn't working. I'm like, okay, I know this works. You know, I put it down a well with concrete surrounded by concrete which is going to block the signal and uh, something's really weird. So um, at that point I turned the drone off because I was trying to use the drone to record because that's got a fairly decent camera in it and uh, then I tried it again and suddenly it worked. So I don't know what the exact technical details are but apparently the Wi-Fi from the drone was interfering with the Wi-Fi from the GoPro um, when the GoPro signal got weaker, which is, you know, when you put it past the steel guardrail, if you put it in water, even though the antenna was there, it was still apparently weakened it enough <clears throat> that something happened. You know, whether it's just the Wi-Fi signals blocking each other or whether the drone Wi-Fi, which also can, can also connect to the phone, and I, I do have that set up. Um, maybe it was interfering with the Wi-Fi connection from the GoPro at that end. I, I'm not sure of the actual details. So I decided that, well, all right, even though my Olympus digital camera doesn't take that high resolution pictures, I will use that to record the cinematic experience of the being able to use the GoPro underwater and have the Wi-Fi signal travel up the antenna that I made uh, into the phone. So I went out to do that. I went out to actually the Bear Pond natural area because that has a big wide bridge 
over the Muscoma River, and you know there's no traffic there at all. Um, unfortunately, I when I did that again, I was using the box, and I was sitting down because I could you know there wasn't any, there's no guardrail there, so you can sit down and put your legs over and easily access stuff um, off to the side without putting it too close to the water. I did still use the box because it was again a sunny day, and but I used this. Unfortunately, I apparently double clicked it somehow. So the footage I got was me taking the the GoPro out of the water and fiddling around and then putting it back down and then you know I did it a couple times and then I clicked the button again but that time I turned it off you know and pulled it back out clicked the button which turned it on and so the footage I got was garbage. And unfortunately, I didn't look at the footage. I do actually have a viewfinder in this camera, so I could have actually reviewed the footage before I left, but I, but I didn't. So uh, that was disappointing. Um, I then went out to, did, did a couple hikes before I went out to try the, you know, recording the antenna working. And I ran into a lot of ticks, and one of the ticks crawled into this uh, chamber over here where you have all the, the connections and when I eventually I found that there was a tick inside of the USB port here and my thought is that it, it shorted it out I don't know if there's a, a fuse in here possibly you know I'd like to think so I haven't tried opening it up to see if it works but see if I can find something that I can repair um, I'm suspecting not but uh, at some point I'll give it a shot, but, but now the camera doesn't work. So I had, uh, don't have a, a third camera that I can use to record uh, the footage, having the GoPro connect to the cell phone, uh, putting the GoPro underwater, and having the signal come up through the antenna. So unfortunately I don't have another camera I can use. I only now only have the two working cameras, the cell phone and the GoPro. So what I'm going to do is I took some footage last year when I was working on the well. It's not very good. Uh, the, there's a lot of reflection off the cell phone screen, but you can basically, if you ignore that, you can basically see the camera going into the water um, and there's some stones and the, the water pipe is down there. So you can sort of see it through it. It's not a great cinematic experience, but um, it should constitute proof that things are working the way that I say they're working. Um, so uh, I'm going to show that now. Okay, so let's see. Let's see how this is working. A little difficult with only two hands. But you see the camera going down the well. Spinning around. And we are at the water level. Camera goes underwater. And we still have video. We have an interference, I guess. See the rocks, you can see the cable. There are the uh, hose that goes in. That's the inlet 